What is up, everybody? This is John with Archer Fish. Thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, commenting, all that good stuff. I really do appreciate it, especially during this transition time when I am not able to get out and fish because I am uh, not stuck, but I am somewhat um, displaced in Colorado at the moment. But uh, very shortly, I will be back on the water. I will be fishing. And you're going to get a lot of great new content a little revamp of the channel to where you're going to get a lot of really cool footage, a lot of um, a, a very good variety of ty different types of fishing, including bass. So that is coming very soon. So I appreciate you guys watching these videos, my subscribers, to anyone new to the channel. Um, it's not always talking videos. I typically like to do maybe one talking video and just tons of fishing content interspersed in this video. You're going to see a lot of clips from me fishing and stuff like that. So just so you know, I do fish. <laughs> I've been fishing in Florida for a very long time, since I was three years old. And uh, I really started focusing on some of the saltwater game fish the last, uh, oh man, I've been doing it for a long time since high school, but for the past like maybe 10 or 15 years, I've been really focused on saltwater uh, game fish like snook, redfish, trout, uh, all that stuff. So in this video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just kind of tell you and show you some clips and some footage of the best ways to catch snook in Florida and some of the best places as well. Um, the place I started uh, fishing for snook in Florida um, which is where I started fishing uh, growing up was uh, Stewart Jensen Beach area, that whole that whole section, the causeways, the beach, the Indian River Lagoon, all that stuff. And <clears throat> the easiest way to catch snook in general would be live shrimp. And I prefer um, live lining them or fly lining them, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, you know, the guys at Snook Nook there in Jensen Beach, man, they, uh, the old Happy Henry, he's the one that told me about this years ago when I first went in there. I was like... You know, I just, you know, there weren't a lot of YouTube channels on how to do it back then. And uh, you go to the expert, you know, you go to the source and they, they know what they're doing. It's right by the Jensen Beach Causeway. Super cool uh, group of people in there. And Happy Henry was always super cool. I used to read his, um, I'd go down there twice a year and fish. And I would use read his uh, fishing reports that he had online for the longest time. And they're very helpful. And, you know, I'd go in there you know, as soon as they open and they would just tell you how to do it. And one of the ways that they told me, which worked like a charm and still does, is live lining or fly lining the uh, a live shrimp. And, you know, so I would use a medium sized rod, uh, about 20 to 30 pound braid, uh, and then about 20 pound floral, depending on where I was fishing. Go right to the causeway bridge right there and you float a uh, live shrimp underneath. <clears throat> the current's gotta be very specific. You need current because they're ambush predators, as you guys all know. Um, but you don't want too much current to where your live shrimp, you know, goes under the bridge and instead of sinking down to where the snook are all staging, you know, it kind of floating around top where there's like mangroves and, and puffer fish and all kinds of other things that are going to eat it. Uh, so you want current to be, you know, enough to where you, you, you throw it down and it, and it slowly drifts under, it goes right into the target zone. Cause you don't know where the, <coughs> if the fit, uh, the snook are staging right underneath the bridge or back in the current. As you guys know, if you've seen other videos, you know, the snook will move into the current to feed around pilings and things like that. So you want that live shrimp to to trigger their predator response. So if there's a, uh, a piling, and, and I showed you this in the uh, Sanibel videos off the pier, you could see, I would see them stage on one side of the piling. And so, you know, if you're throwing the snook or the uh, shrimp on this side, nothing's going to happen. If you put it right in front of their face, a lot of times nothing's going to happen. But if that shrimp drifts right around this side of it and triggers that ambush response, they will go up and grab that uh, shrimp. So live lining shrimp, also, I always use circle hooks because you don't have to set the hook and they're very easy to get out. Um, and they typically don't swallow them, although that has happened. And uh, probably about a size two or size three. If I'm using shrimp, size one or size two. If you're using live fish, you know, like croakers or pinfish, threadfin, um, anything like that, then you want to use like a size three or a size four, a little bit larger of a hook. Uh, but it depends on the size of the bait. Yeah, that is one really good tried and true way is is live lining live shrimp. Um, I would fish the docks in, uh, in uh, the Indian River Lagoon as well. I've been doing that for a very, very long time. And again, 
you know, a live shrimp underneath the dock, same, same scenario, you know, underneath the, uh, typically with like the snook lights or dock lights, uh, a lot of times the bigger snook, they hide in the shadows just on the line of the light, um, as if you're fishing at night. And so throwing, you want to throw that, um, shrimp right around that shadow line. And that's where you're going to get bit a lot of times. Um, the big old, uh, 38 inch snook that I caught, off of the uh, in, in the Indian River Lagoon, off the dock there, um, it was just in the. It just I could barely see the tail sticking up. It was just in the darkness, out of the dock light, regular dock light, and I threw my sh live shrimp in there and just let it sit right in front of him for the longest time. And bam, that's when I when I grabbed him. Uh, so that was super cool. Um, so yeah, live shrimp works great for snook. Uh, same with on Sandoval Island, all the different places that I fish over there. Using live uh, shrimp will always get you bit. Sometimes under a popping cork, it works just fine. Um, I like to live line it though, because it just, it swims, it does its own thing. It, it sinks all the way down. There's no restriction as far as like your leader on the popping cork and it's very effective. Uh, second way that I like to catch snook and possibly the most fun way is uh, using a lure of some kind. As I showed you in that other video, the Yazuri Crystal Minnow has been super effective ever since I first tried it years ago at Sanibel. My first fishing trip to Sanibel, using that Yazuri in the rain when it's like overcast and just slaying snook was just super fun. It's just, it, it has a great uh, action to it. It looks fantastic. The Yozuri uh, Crystal color kind of, you know, it doesn't, it stands out because of the black back, but it doesn't, you know, look too, doesn't give too much away, especially in that clearer water on the West Coast. You know, that one video, I'll show you this clip right here, catching that uh, snook from shore was just amazing because I saw it come up and grab that lure and it was super exciting, super fun. Also caught a lot of trout on that lure. But anyway, uh, so yeah, using a lure, the crystal minnow has been very effective. The DOA Terror Eyes has been really good lately. Now that I will switch to in the darker water. So some of the inshore stuff, you know, where it's a little bit brackish and it's a little uh, tannin colored, the little darker water. I like to use that root beer color terror eyes because it, it fits in that water, it looks like it. As you guys may or may not know, prey fish um, will kind of disguise themselves or camouflage themselves in the color of the water. So. You'll see on the west coast uh, off the beach when it's super clear, you'll see the little greenies look super clear and super green and they kind of uh, blend in. In the darker water, you'll see the darker sort of minnows, you know, kind of fitting in there because they kind of blend in with the water. So always kind of match the color water. You don't want to stand out too much. You want to kind of match because the, you know, the predator fish just see movement, see what the outline, what looks like a fish and they tear it up. Um, so the terrorize works good. The crystal minnow works good. The mirrodine works fantastic. As I told you in that last video. And also with this snook right here, one of my favorites, uh, this is how I first started fishing for snook was using the, uh, the flare hawks. Now there's a lot of different styles, uh, and sizes, you know, you want the heavier ones, the, at least an ounce. Um, and I like the red and white or the red, white, and chartreuse, and I would kind of mix them up. And, you know, if you, you're out there uh, pre-dawn, you know, like about two hours before the sun comes up is the best time to throw those flare hawks around bridges and big structure. You can throw them off the beach as well if you think there's some snook in there. And uh, you kind of operate them like a jig. You don't want them to hit the bottom, especially if you're fishing near the bridges because there's so many snags, other people's line, all the stuff. You'll lose so many of them because of that. But you want it to get close to hitting the bottom before you start popping up. Or you can just kind of do a slow retrieve with those uh, flare hawks. And uh, again, it's been super effective. My first uh, snook I caught within a couple of minutes of, of doing this was a flare hawk. And it was super exciting. They just load up on it. Um, I used a pinfish uh, in this one video right here, and that is how I caught that probably 20, I don't know, 20, 31 inch, 31 inch maybe, 30, 31 inch snook. Um, super exciting because he was not eating the shrimp, um, so I put on a little pinfish, and they're very, very effective uh, for catching them. And, and I knew because of the this the water was so, the current was so strong, and I knew there was snook hanging out in there. Um, I did use a bobber for that reason because I could kind of, uh, track where it was the bobber and the fish were going to sit in those little eddies. So that's why I use that. So yeah, and uh, you can use weighted um, shrimp if you're on a dock or something and you think that the snook are staging underneath. Um, so if the, if the snook aren't actively feeding, you're seeing them pop and you're seeing them come out and ambush, uh, you can use a weight, you know, those little egg weights 
uh, and you and get a different a few different sizes in case you know especially with like Sanibel Pier you don't know what the current is going to be like so if you're fishing off a bridge or a pier you know have a bunch of different options and uh and and very strong um fluoro or even mono uh off of those things because they'll get you wrapped up so quick uh and like i've said before you know the snook are not try they're not smart trying to wrap you up what they're doing is they'll grab your bait and then go back around the piling to their staging spot you know i, I watched these these snook out at sanibel pier and it was amazing watching them come out smash this group of greenies and then go right back down to where they were and they would kind of alternate and do that or do it at the same time or whatever but what was interesting was seeing them sit there come up and feed and go right back around the piling and you realize that is why they're wrapping you up that they're not reacting necessarily to the line in their mouth they're just going right back to where they were which is almost always around the the structure they're ambushing from so it was super cool to see but yeah, you can you you don't have to fly line them if the current is too much. But you know there's snook down there. You know you get a heavy enough weight, you can flip it underneath the dock. You want to try to get it as far to the center of the dock or even to the other side if the current's going that way. You know, so the dock is here and the current's going this way, and you and you think the snook are in here. You know, flip that thing down in there, and so it, it you know so the sh so the shrimp is right in front of their face. Because if you drop it down this way, the current's going to take it that way. If you drop it straight down, it may not go all the way to where they're at. So you can put a weight on there and whip it underneath to try to get it in those snook's face. And I've seen a lot of great success with doing that. So yeah, that is it. Those are kind of the best ways, I think, to catch snook in Florida. Real quick, just some of the spots that I've fished over the years. Obviously, Stewart Jensen Beach area. Um, I've seen them schooling up on um, little glass minnows and stuff on the beach, and I've been very successful catching them on the beach. Uh, but I like to target the Indian River Lagoon, uh, the mangrove edges, of course, the Jensen Beach Causeway. And my favorite would be any of the docks down there, uh, any of the docks and piers. If you're staying at one of the places or if you're in a boat, you know, fish around those docks and stuff. And it is just it's just such a great spot for snook as long as there's no uh, red tide and all that other bad stuff that flows out of the uh, the river. Um, so, yeah, Stewart is one of my favorite spots. I had great success years and years ago. I think it's called the Vero Beach Pier. You know, those big piers, Sebastian Inlet, Juno, uh, Vero Beach, uh, these piers are fantastic. The, you know, the fish come in there because there's there's inlets there and the, and the snooks school up in there. And it's just not my favorite way to fish because there's so many people. Uh, a lot of people kill their snook when they're in season, which I cannot stand. Um, and it's just crowded and not only that, or they're killing and keeping everything or just killing the snook or, or some of the other game fish. And I just don't like to be around that sort of element. But that being said, the piers are great places to fish and a lot of great, uh, fun, uh, fishermen that, that, you know, utilize these piers. So it can be a lot of fun. And Vero Beach Pier, like I said, I think one, uh, summer I was fishing there. Summer is kind of the best time for the piers. And it was just snook after snook. Everybody was hooked up. It is a pretty crazy sight, uh, but it can be a bit hectic and it's not something that I really love to do. Um, so yeah, on the West Coast, uh, obviously I love Sanibel, um, Estero Bay and the bridges there. Um, where else? Lover's Key down there, sound south. Naples is fantastic. Um, let's see what else. Um, uh, Boca Grande, as they call it down there, Boca Grande. Um, yeah, it, it's a fantastic place. There's a, there's a pier over there that I've had a lot of success, especially in um, October, I want to say I was down there, May and October, and fishing late at night with big old live baits was just fantastic. Um, all the different places of Boca Grande are, are, are great. There's uh, great beaches over there, too. Uh, there's some jetties. If you can find jetties using Google Maps or whatever, those are always a good spot for snook. Um yeah, so that is it. Cedar Key is, is is catching up on the snook action, which is crazy. My dad caught one there, and I, like I said, in 40-something years, I've never seen a snook in uh, Cedar Key. Um, so yeah, those are the spots. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of other great spots, and I hope to be exploring them this year. Um, so yeah, that is it. Those are the, the, ways, the best ways to catch snook I've found. And like I said before, you know, I use a medium uh, rod with a a 2,500 or 3,000 size reel for a lot of these applications, you know, 15 to 20 pound braid, 20 to 30 pound fluoro, um, and, you know, one to two uh, aught um, uh, circle hooks, you know, and it just depends. Like I said, that's kind of my go-to, uh, but 
fishing off the, uh, the, the, some of the docks or some of the bridges, and you know, there's bigger fish. And then I, then I upgrade to the 4,000. I think I've got a pen, um, fierce, uh, or pursuit. I forget which one it is, but yeah, a size 4,000 reel, 60 pound braid. And then I go like 50 or 60 uh, pound mono or floral as a leader and a ton of it. If I'm around the bridge pilings and stuff like that, bigger size hooks for using the bigger bait. Um, yeah, and that is it. So thanks for watching everybody. Stay tuned for more videos. I appreciate it. Subscribe if you like this stuff. I will see you tomorrow.